As the sun sinks below the rugged blue mountains, a hidden world stirs to life. Tonight, we venture deep into the wild bushland of the Hawkesbury, right on the outskirts of Sydney. As darkness falls and the temperatures cling to the roads, an unseen world awakens. We're on a mission to find the elusive nocturnal reptiles that call this stunning landscape home. From slithering snakes to cryptic geckos and possibly even a species we've never encountered before. So grab a drink, cross your fingers and toes because it's going to be an epic night. Guys, let's go look what we got over here. Quick, quick, quick. Another local Hawkesbury diamond python. Now look at that, and he's another beautiful one, just like in our last video. Beautiful yellows and blacks. It's been pretty much a 40 degree, 38 degree day here in Sydney, and we thought we'd head out. We've been driving for about half an hour, and this is the actual first thing we've seen. There's been so many sticks and leaves on the ground because the storm's blowing around, the wind's in the air, the lightning's coming down now. There was even just a little bit of rain. And we saw this thing halfway out of the bush. It was heading this way down to the river. And I actually thought it was a big stick or a log that had blown over. And it's this big, chunky diamond python. And he's getting a bit cranky with me. We can have a closer look. He's actually consumed a prey item probably within the last week or so. It would either be a rat or a ringtail possum that's partly digested now and it's not much left of it to be honest. He's gone straight into that defensive posturing because when they do have that prey item in them they're a lot slower than they would normally be. That's what he's got to do, he's got to defend himself. Due to the prey item in this animal we don't want to handle him, we just want to let him continue off into the bush, keep going down to the river. I might give him a bit of a help with my hook out of the car. We don't want to pick him up and handle him and disturb his stomach, disturb the prey inside and then have him regurgitate his meal because that meal can potentially last him months on months until he finds the next one. These guys can go a very, very long time without eating. And what a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Could not live in a better place. Literally 20 minutes from my home. Have a look. This snake is being extremely defensive and I don't want him hanging out on the road. So I will grab my hook out of the car now. We'll give him a little lift down into the scrub there to continue on his way and he'll be safe as houses. You can see this guy's actually copped an old injury at some point. You can see the discoloration in the scales there, there and there. So whether something's bitten him, maybe a large dog, a quoll, dingo, and he's potentially been able to get away with it. That type of injury is also synonymous with being run over by a car and healing on his own if the injury wasn't too bad. It just goes to show what troopers these animals are. It potentially could have even been a prey item of his having a nibble on him while he was trying to constrict the animal. But yeah, these guys are just top of the food chain, predator. Alrighty, we'll grab me hook, we'll get you off the road, buddy. So like I said, this snake's being incredibly defensive. I'm sure I could gently pick him up, but why risk it? He's already stressed enough. We want to move him off. We're going to try and gently pick him up with the hook and move him down in the direction he was headed. Come on, buddy. I don't want you to lose your prey item. Even more, I don't want you to get run over. And then I'll pick you up here and here. Oh, there he goes. Just a little love tap. And away he goes. Look at that. Up there, through the scrub. Ah, there he goes now. You can see him through here. And look at that. Look at the way that patterning just blends into its surrounds. They are built for this habitat. And about probably only 50 metres down this embankment is the river. A beautiful, stunning river that this snake would have lived a long, long, prosperous life alongside. These snakes can live up to 20, 30 plus years, and that's definitely a full-grown snake. The heads can get much, much bigger, and that's how you know when it's a very, very old animal. But that snake has been out here for a long time doing his thing. And he is gone. Let's see what else we can get. And here we are, our next reptile for the night, the common scaly foot. Now, if you guys have been watching my recent videos, Herping Sydney, I think even Herping the Blue Mountains, we got one of these guys. So he does look like a snake, especially the way they move. They got no legs. They've got these little flap feet here, which I can't really pull out with one hand, but you can see that flap just behind my thumb there. 
and you would see if he wants to flick his tongue he's actually got a big fleshy tongue just like a gecko they don't have the forked tongue like a snake so with a little look they are quite easy to differentiate between a snake and a legless lizard now the other interesting thing being a gecko these guys can drop their tails and he has actually dropped it very very recently within the last couple days actually let's try and have a look buddy oh where's he going <laughs> where's your tail going it's not actively bleeding or anything, but it does look quite fresh, whether that was tonight, today, last night. So what that means, basically, some sort of predator has come grab the back end of this lizard. He's dropped his tail. The tail continues to wiggle around, move around, and the predator can then go for the tail rather than the lizard. The lizard gets away safe as sound, and he just has to grow his tail back over a little bit of time. And that is their defense mechanism, just like other geckos that we have out here. All right, let's get you off the road. Seeing as you've already dealt with one predator, we don't want a car to be another one. Away you go, buddy. Awesome, awesome little critters. <laughs> You're not going to believe this right now. This is going to sound so stupid to any seasoned herpers, but this is the first time I have seen this snake. <laughs> a bandy bandy and a brilliant size one of that look at him guys Ow! oh and there he goes doing that defense mechanism that they are known for his defensive display i've done a few rescues for these guys unfortunately they haven't had the best outcome i think one was attacked by a dog one was i was going to say attacked by a tractor but um, it was just accidentally dug up by a digger and that obviously wasn't going to end well. I'm just going to get him off the road here. There's a car coming. And there he is. I hate when the cars come. One, you've got to worry about the animals being run over. <laughs> Two, sometimes you get sticky beaks that want to stop and have a chat. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, oh, oh why are you doing that? Oh, it's a snake. Kill it. All oh, that absolute mumbo jumbo. But is this not the coolest damn snake you guys have ever seen? This guy is just absolutely incredible. On so many occasions now, we'll put him back down. On so many occasions now, I've wanted to find these guys in my videos and we only get the blind snakes. So that is the prey item of these guys. Oh, there he goes doing his defensive display. And look at that. I'll keep going on food in a minute. But there's a bandy bandy putting on the defensive display. So they do these curly whirlies to make themselves look bigger than they actually are. And isn't that incredible? That is just such a unique thing for a snake to do. You see, he's just got the little tip of his tail there holding up his ring there. As I was saying, these guys feed exclusively on blind snakes. In so many videos now, we found the blind snakes, and I'm like, come on, let's get a bandy bandy. Hey, you're blocking your beautiful little head there. Let's have a look at your little face there. There we are. We just want to see how pretty you are. There's his tiny little face. You can see his little eye. He's got a tiny little mouth. So they are a venomous species, but... Their mouth is just so small. I mean, even if he wanted to bite you, I don't know if he could. <laughs> I think there are records of maybe one bite and there's this sort of localized pain and swelling. I don't know if even pain, just maybe some redness. But what a phenomenal, phenomenal little species of snake. So anyway, this snake doing his defensive display means he feels threatened. There's a car coming. Come on. Ugh. There's another car coming, we'll get off the road here. So the last thing I want, was we'll wait for this car to go past. <laughs> there he goes, he's got his little tongue flicking now. As I was saying, the last thing I want is this snake to feel threatened. I do not want him to feel threatened and have to do his defensive display, so look at that. This is just like, not even a real snake this is incredible i've been wanting to find one of these guys for so so long i know a spot where you can get them on foot pretty commonly but i'm just a little bit too lazy to walk down the hill driving is much much easier road cruising yeah as i was saying i don't want him feeling threatened it's the last thing i want for this little fella so we'll get him off the road because there are surprisingly quite a few cars coming and we'll let him keep going on his way looking for the blind snakes which i actually haven't seen tonight normally we get a lot of them i find it so interesting the patterning on these guys actually look at that there 
Like so many of our Australian species, are you gonna unwrap yourself? <laughs> there he's gonna go under the leaf litter and just disappear. Yeah, as I was saying, so many of our Australian species, they have patterning and colors to blend in with their surrounds, but I don't know, what is black and white? I don't know what they're planning to blend in with. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really interesting. You gonna keep going? It's like he's just trying to bury under there to get away from me and we'll let him do that. See you, buddy. You've been an absolute pleasure. So I unfortunately just found another little scaly foot. It's actually the fifth one for the night. They're absolutely everywhere, but I didn't think you guys would wanna see the same thing over and over and over. So he's been dead for a while. You can see the little bugs have already eaten his eye there and his tongue. His tongue's gone all hard just from the heat on the road. He was probably hit earlier tonight and the road is just so warm that has happened. But essentially, I thought I wouldn't let this guy go to waste. Let's give you guys a really good look at the common scaly foot. So, we start off, obviously the head sort of looks like a bit like a blue tongue, if you ask me, a bit like a skink. You see their eye there and we're not gonna be able to tell, but the tongue, it's more of a fleshy tongue. I mean, you can tell that it's a fleshy tongue. It's not a forked tongue like a snake. We go down the body, not very far. So these guys are predominantly tail. So literally about sort of like exactly the middle of this guy, we got his little flaps, his little flap feet, which is why they are called the flap footed lizard. There's his little flap feet. They just evolved over time. He obviously didn't need them. They ended up with these little flaps. And those flaps are just about in line with the cloaca. The cloaca or the butthole in layman's terms. <laughs> and then all of this, all of this is tail. So we can actually see where this particular lizard, this gecko, has lost his tail in the past. So if we look closely just here, you can see a little bit more on the side, you can see that line there. You can see where the scalation colors change, the patterning changes ever so slightly on the sides, and that is his regenerated tail. Also, if we look underneath, you can see the different scalation in the tail there. You can see quite obvious the large shape there down to the smaller shape. If I'm wrong, anyone please correct me in the comments and I'll fix it up, but this is what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing quite a fair difference between the two bits of the tail there. Now, the other thing is, if you guys ever do pick these up for some reason, you go to move them off the road and his tail's cut off there, for example, go, oh, it's all right, he's already lost his tail, he's not gonna lose it, and you grab him there, he can lose that again. You grab him there, he can lose that again. You grab him there, he can lose it again. They can keep losing different sections even if they've already lost a section at the back pretty close up to the cloaca there they are a seriously incredible animal and that is what gets them by out in the aussie bush now let's keep going so we're out here really really close to home tonight guys it's actually the last day slash night of spring and it's like the hottest night we've had. It's literally still like 28 degrees and we've been driving around for, what do you reckon, two hours and we found absolutely nothing. I'm like, I want to check out this rock shelf that I've known about for years but I've always wanted to come up at night and I thought I would. So I'm super glad that we've been able to get another species for that video as we hadn't found these guys yet because I haven't actually found them for a while. The first one we found was this beautiful little baby. So it's a little thick-tailed barking gecko, Underwatersaurus milli. We saw him running around and I went to catch him and I'm like, I can hear more. I'm like, I think there's more around. This was the exact species I thought would be in this type of location. If you have a look, that is its original tail. It's got the white stripes on it and it matches the patterns on the body. So we'll let him run down. You can eat that little bull ant if you want, buddy. And then we look here and we got the big mama. She's actually being surprisingly polite. I found a heap of these guys out in the New South Wales Mallee. Like, you gotta try and miss them. Out there, they were so grumpy. All the ones I've found in Sydney, they've never been too grumpy. Beautiful, beautiful lizard. The purples and the yellows. You can see regenerated tail. No patterning, no lines, no stripes. It's just a plain, bland tail. And an awesome, awesome species of animal.
And these guys out in the Mallee, they'll sort of like, they're called a barking gecko because they're like, eh, eh, but they'll also go, eh. like it's the weirdest thing. It's hard to explain. I've already lost him. Oh, but they are just a stunning, stunning gecko. They've got to be the best gecko in Sydney without a doubt. Now I wanted to get a close up of the little fella, but I think he's probably gone. It'll be extremely hard pressed to find him in the leaf litter. So we'll just have to be careful not to walk that way as well. So we don't want to squash him, but I did want a close up of him, but I think he's gone. Get a couple more of me mate over here. Exact gecko I thought we'd find up here. 